Hi friends, it is Janice Yoder here with you again, owner of Adore Bridal in Illinois and in Arizona and advisor for Poppy Software. I mean, how cute are these, really? Okay, so we are coming at you with a blog and video series to help you prepare for market. Maybe this is your first year, maybe it's your 10th year, your fifth year, your second, I don't know, but there's always something to learn, right? So we are gonna just come up with these along the way prep tips so that way you can ensure that this market is your best year yet. So we talked to you last time with just kind of some overview. It was like just the basics of what we wanna think about. Now we're gonna start diving in in these next, this video and the next two after that in some specifics. Okay, so we're gonna talk this, this video about just like what makes a really good buy. And I'm not talking about one designer, I am talking about your buy at market and how you can prepare to know how to make your best buy. So whenever I talk about your best buy, huh, yeah, didn't mean to do that, but whenever I talk about the best buy possible for your store, I'm not talking about budgets yet, Trust me, we'll get there. But I'm talking about what's going to sell. How do I know that I am buying what's going to sell in my store? So I've got four things that we wanna look at and work together to get this information. One is that size matters. So we wanna make sure that we're buying the appropriate dresses, especially I'm speaking to you special order stores, but if you're an off the rack store, this totally applies to you as well. It's just gonna be executed slightly differently, right? Um, but even as a special order store, that size really does matter. So the thing is, is that you've gotta prepare ahead of time. You need to prepare this data. Um, you need to collect this information and it should all be right there. It should all be within your systems, so that way you can easily access this data in order to make the best buy possible that is going to sell in your store. So the things that I want you to look for is number one, you're gonna find for this time period, you can pick it. Um, I never recommend going less than six months. Um, for sizes, you could go for over a year, um, would be, you could do that pretty easily with sizes. Um, nothing less than six months. Some people just wanna do it like the six months for this buy, this, but whenever it comes to sizes, probably a year is what's best to look at to collect the data. So what you're gonna do is what have I sold? What sizes have I sold over the past year? And then you're gonna take that as a whole and you're gonna figure out the percentages, right? Like, okay, so I sold everything from a two to a 38. Okay, but what percentage of my sales were size twos? What percentage of my sales were size 12s? What percentage of my sales were size 30s? And so on. Now, the next step of this is you take a look at your inventory. So now we're gonna look at our inventory and we're gonna say, what sizes do I have in my inventory? And then you're gonna kind of line up those percentages too, right? You're gonna say like, okay, so, what percentage of size eights do I have? What percentage of size 12s do I have? What percentage of size 20s? And on and on and on. So once we get all that, we're gonna look at those two side by side. And we're gonna say, huh, that's kind of interesting. Like, I am not selling anything to like a two and a four and a six. I wonder if that's because my samples don't start until a 12. Or, you know, this size seems to be a big struggle for us. Like you can start uncovering some of that data just by seeing just, just the range of numbers and the percentages. Now, if you wanna dig a little bit deeper into it, you can start looking at like some of your top selling dresses and what sizes have you sold that in? Because we know like you don't have to put a size 12 bride in a size 12 dress. So there's room there, right? But like, if you see a top selling dress and you say like, we're only selling it in this size, then it might be worth it. One of the things you think about is, do I think that would sell? Is it because I 
it, I just can't clip it well enough. Like maybe I have a plus size dress and there's just no way to clip it well enough for a size eight to see it. If I had that style in a size eight, would I sell it? So it's starting to process all of that information, um, which can feel overwhelming and I, I get it, but um, it's so worth it for you to do because it's also gonna help you just immediately walk into market and be like, I do not need 12s. You know, maybe that's what it is for you or like how in the world, like I've got a great plus size section. I've got like five 16s, I've got four 18s, I've got five 20s, I've got one 22 and one 24 and five 25s. Okay. So I need to get some 22s and 24s at market. I mean, there are things that you, you truly kind of don't even realize sometimes until you have it laid out in front of you in that way. So size matters. Number two, the color and cut. So colors, I want you to do the same thing. I want you to run a report or gather the data, however it works for you to see. In this one, I, I would actually tell you to go six months like I wouldn't tell you to go a year because like color is definitely a trend that changes faster. Size, not a trend, just, it's just size. So color's a trend. So let's just look at six months worth of data at the most and see what we're selling. If you can like trend it out even better, if you have the ability to do that. Um, I have loved building those reports in Poppy because Friends make it so much easier to see. So, right, so we're gonna look at it and say, okay, I've sold this many of this color, this many of this color. If I have a trend report, I'm seeing like, well, actually I sold, you know, I can see it going like this of that color. Oh, that makes it way easier for you to know, like, gonna calm down in that size or that color at market. And then if you see like another trend where, oh, for us, it's like the all ivory. If I see that happening, then I'm able to say, okay, I, I might need to get a little bit more in there because I'm gonna take that trend information from what I sold and I'm gonna pair it to the reports of what do I have in my store? So like, what colors do I currently have? Like if I'm seeing my all ivory sales go like this, but my store has mostly nude ivory and like this much ivory, then I know that I need to go into market with a different mindset about the colors that I'm choosing. Again, yes, if you are a great salesperson, you will shove that piece of fabric underneath that lace and be like, see, it's gonna be amazing. But it truly is important to make sure that we're balanced in those ways. And not just balance like, I don't want you to have just balanced colors across your store. I want you to have balanced colors by what you're selling and what you're trending to sell in your store. That's what I mean by balance. So take a look at that and that that really does matter. Now, if you can go a step further, go into like the actual, like, is it fitted? Is it sheath? Is it, you know, A-line? Is it ball gown? All those things. And like, if you can get that data as well, really great. Um, but if we can do that, if we can for sure get the colors and we for sure got the sizes and we're like kind of getting like, okay, what's, what fits have we been selling the most? How is that trending? What are we going to do? We're going to go to number three, because truly this is all better together. All of this information is better whenever you look at it as a whole, because you might uncover something. You might look at your like, sizes, hopefully it's a trend report, your sizes and your colors and see a common theme. Hmm, like this color and this size are trending or, you know, then maybe you're looking at some of your fit stuff and going like, we have for sure seen more ball gown requests so and more ball gown sales, but, or we've lost more, which that's gonna, Get to my next point, we've lost more ball gowns. So this information has to work together. I mean, will you have a good buy if you just have your size information? Sure. 
Will you have a good buy if you just kind of evaluated your colors and the trends that are happening? Sure. You can have a great buy if you put it all together. But there's one more thing to this, and I have to just say this before I go on to point four. Do not guess. Do not guess on this. Don't go by what you feel like. I want you to get it from the data. Because here's the thing. Probably what we feel like is maybe not spot on. And hey, trust your gut. Like you are the expert. Like I said, you know what works best for your stores. But I'm going to tell you that that kind of gut feeling is gonna have more to do with like styles in your store than things like what size should I get it in? Um, some things might be super clear to you, but the caution that I give is that if you have a frustration coming into market of like, oh, it just seems like every bride that we've had for the past month is like a size four and we can't clip anything on her and she can't visualize it, then you're gonna come in and like be hyper-focused on that. When the reality is, is like if you ran the numbers, you might be like, oh, we've actually only had three size fours in the last month out of 50 brides, so maybe I shouldn't go super heavy that way. But it, they're frustrating when they happen, and it's frustrating whenever you can't serve them best, and, and you're just like, I have to fix it. I have to fix it. I have to find a solution. So you jump into, well, I, oh, I feel like every bride that's coming right now is this. So I'm just gonna encourage you to just like, take a breath, let the, all of that go, and instead look at your numbers. This is where your handy dandy little binder that you're gonna bring with you can come in super handy because not only can you have like tabs for where you're, um, you know, just your designers go, you can put their information in. You can have your reports already in here, your trends, notes on it, all that stuff. All in one place. Now granted, maybe you're not, maybe you're not a paper pen kind of girl, you know, girl to girl. That's truly fine. Like that, that handy dandy iPad can come in really handy. Or maybe you're like already at market and you're watching these and you're like, well, I'm through. Like it's over. It's not over. Pull up the reports. Like, you've got them, you can compile, like, even if it's a quick view into it, at least know that you have looked at it and that you're making that educated decision. Okay, enough. I've preached at you enough. Let's go on to point four. Um, number four is the missing pieces. So how do we determine the missing pieces in our store? Like, part of this is like trend and we're going to market to buy for what we think brides are gonna ask us six months from now. Woo! Ah, great. But there's another layer to this. There's the layer of what have I lost to? So if you have the ability, I highly encourage you, if you are not doing it already, to ask your brides who did not buy with you for a picture of what they bought. Some of you just went, mm, that's like cringy. It's not, it's not at all. So if you do this as part of your regular routine, you've built a relationship with these brides. You're saying that you're excited for them. You're saying like, oh, can I see a picture? I'm sure you're gorgeous. I just wanna celebrate with you. That's not cringy, okay? You I mean, you might have an ulterior motive, but it's not cringy, it's relationships. And then the other ways you can say like, Oh, I would love to see what you have because honestly, like we didn't have the dress for you. So I wanna see if we're missing something. So that way we can provide the best possible experience for all future brides. Brides love helping future brides. They love it. Okay, so if this is not part of your regular routine, it's okay, you can still get this information. Do a Google form, do a survey monkey or whatever other, there's other options too. Throw it out there. Say, hey, as we're preparing for market, like we want to have the best dresses, the best styles to best serve our brides. Can you help? Can you help future brides? Yes, they can. They will get so excited. So you can ask them, I mean, be simple, send us a picture. 
ask them where they bought it from, ask them the price point. You can ask whatever you want. If you're trying to just collect information for market and you're doing this fast, I would recommend making it super simple and attaching a gift card to it. For all of the responses that we get in by February 28th, we're gonna do a drawing for a $10 Starbucks card. Or we're gonna do five drawings for $10 Starbucks cards. It doesn't take much to like, just get that little extra push to get them to fill it out. But just really, like, you're a bride, are you, can you help us, can you help future brides? Just that alone is really gonna get a lot of responses. So that's how you find the missing pieces, right? A couple of things are gonna come up as you're getting these pictures in. And if you do it on a regular basis, you need to have a process for how you're compiling them and then having them in your handy dandy binder at market. Or you like in Google, it's fine, you can have it on your iPad too. Um, so, but how you're gonna compile it is you're looking for a trend again. It's all about trends. So you're looking for a trend. Is it just that like, well, we had a dress like exactly like that, that we put her in. I mean, if you wanna try to find out from her, like, was it a price thing? Was it whatever? Or maybe you're like, you want that? That's like the complete opposite of what you told us you wanted. Well, that's probably like a training thing that you need to do with your staff. But if you all of a sudden start seeing like, five, 10 dresses that all look the same, specifically from brides that did not buy from you, might be a gap that you have. So you're gonna fill in that missing piece. So you've gotta have that in your mind as you go to market. Now, here's the thing about missing pieces. If you try to buy for a missing piece in your stock order right now that's coming in six months from now, it may no longer be a missing piece. So this is whenever you start looking at carryovers. This is the way that I highly recommend if you are gonna pick up some carryovers. I mean, if you're brand new with a line, totally get it, get some of the best sellers. But if you're gonna put carryovers into your order, do it with this. Look at their active stock. Talk with the rep about like, are any, do you have any that are like fast? Print? Show them the picture and say like, I am looking for something in this style. Do you have anything that is a fast ship or in stock that you think fits this? Fill your order that way. So that way your missing pieces are getting to your store fast. Okay, whew. I mean, I know I get a little nerded out with the numbers, fully aware. Size matters, color matters. If you can get to shapes, it's great, but it's okay. I know it's a lot of stuff. So if you can get to shapes and trends and shapes, but all of that stuff on its own, it'll be good. It'll be good for you to have. But whenever you put it together, that's when it makes all the difference in your buy. And then how to handle missing pieces. Don't guess on what you're missing. You can find a way to collect it. Brides love helping brides. Find out what you're missing in your store and then go and say, hey, this is what I'm missing. How can I get it now? What do you have that I can get now? And see how they come to bat for you. See what they find for you. That is a great way to build relationships too. You're one step closer to having your best market ever.